Welcome to the Treasury Dashboard session. My name is Stefan Deal. I'm leading the SAP Global Treasury activities. Together with my colleague Marvin Schmidt, we will show you the interactive and real-time Treasury Dashboard. We developed that together with our colleagues from Enterprise Analytics. It's based on the SAP Analytics Cloud and it is really based only on SAP standard solutions. So we have built connectors into, for example, the general ledger accounts. We have built connectors into our treasury and risk management system. So it's fully integrated and it natively connects to the HANA database. So there is no business warehouse in between. But let's right jump into the dashboard. So we start with a group liquidity overview, which is very important for me as the head of Global Treasury, so that I have an immediate insight in where we stand in terms of liquidity, how it is distributed, and I even can take a look uh, into the individual countries and what liquidity we have in those countries. So if you look at the first part of the Treasury dashboard, you see the group liquidity on the right hand side. Uh, you see also our total debt, which then adds up to a negative net debt situation at the moment. We have the first distribution via our regions. Uh, and then you have here a nice world map with all of the countries where we invest our money. Uh, and let's take the financing entity in Ireland as an example. And you see that we have uh, a liquidity of roughly 460 million euro in that entity. And you already see the distribution in cash and bank deposits. So if we scroll further on, you have more detailed information on our most important legal entities from an investment perspective. So that's SAP SE, that's SAP America, and again, our Irish entity. And you have more information already on the invested cash. For example, the average maturity, you have the average interest rate, and of course, the total volume which is invested in those legal entities. Hi, my name is Marvin, and I'm working in the Global Treasury Department at SAP. I'm responsible for uh, the content development of the Treasury Dashboard, and I will give you a short uh, demonstration of how interactive the Treasury Dashboard is. So, as Stefan already pointed out, we have different views on our liquidity and different breakdowns. So let us, for example, uh, focus on uh, the breakdown by company code. So on the left-hand menu, you can see the different structures um, of the whole corporate. So for example, you can go down to, for example, EMEA, EMEA North, and you can see the single countries and then even the single entities if you go down to the next level. So let us, for example, choose SAP SE, our holding entity. I could type in, for example, the company code 0001. And I can choose SAP SE. And as you can see, all graphs automatically adjust to the new setting. So for example, Imagine these fake bank names would be German banks. We are now seeing predominantly German banks. And also, which is quite intuitive, we can see in the share by currencies, predominantly Euro in transaction currency. And also our asset view has changed, so we can get a more detailed view, a so-called level two breakdown, for example, on our deposits. And as you can see, we, for example, hold at the moment 80 million in commercial papers and 270 million in term deposits. In order to show you how interactive and connected all the available data is in the data model, I can set back our filter. And for example, choose in the currency breakdown in the graph, the US dollar. And now all the, the other graphs only show 
the information related to US dollar transaction currency. So for example, the breakdown by company code only shows US entity denominated um, currencies. So for example, SAP America as one of our major US dollar entity or our US dollar um, denominated Ireland entity and all the others. And also the breakdown by counterparty um, shows now predominantly US dollar banks and also the asset category has adjusted. And by just clicking once, the filter has been removed. So now where you have seen our liquidity part, let's jump into our indebtedness part. In the indebtedness section, the user gets an overview of the financing structure of the entire group. So SAP SE is, for example, predominantly financed with euro bonds and US private placements. And you can see um, how the single tranches are distributed over the time. So for example, um, as you can see in, in light blue, um, in 2018 we are having euro bonds or for example in dark blue um, in 2020 we are having a US private placement tranche. If you scroll down, you can get more specific information on single tranches like the interest rate um, or the effective interest rate and the single amounts of the tranches. Furthermore, we included a fixed to floating mix before using interest rate swaps. So as you can see, before using swaps, we end up at around 70% financed in fix and around 30% finance in variable. So what we are doing by using interest rate swaps is um, getting in, in a situation where we are rather financed variable in the short term and rather financed fixed in the long term. So let's come to our high level risk management view where we analyze our counterparty credit risk. On the x-axis, you can see the limit amount utilized or our exposure. On the y-axis, you can see the free limit. So the share which is still free and where we can still invest. As you can see, and this is quite intuitive, the green bubbles show us that we are compliant. And for example, red bubbles symbolize exceedances. By clicking on the bubble, I can get more information on the single bank. So in this case, Golden Gates Financial Services Bank has an exposure of 278 million and a limit from 500 million. So this gives us 221 million free limit. So we can still invest at this bank from a counterparty credit risk perspective. On the right hand side, we have a menu where we can choose our bank, our bank groups. For example, we can also choose our non-core banks. So as you can see, the chart immediately adjusts and we can see other banks. So let's go back to the core banks. So as you can see, we are having an exceedance at Globe Holding, uh, New National Financial Holdings. And as you can see, the, the exposure is 450 million and the limit is 400, so we have an exceedance. If we scroll down, we can have a closer look on the top five limit buffers and the top five exposures. But now, let's have a closer look on the two banks where we have exceedances to further analyze where this exceedance comes from. Um, here we further analyze our counterparty risk 
limits uh, because it's not one limit. We have also allocated sublimits to the overall limit because we have to differentiate. If we are talking about cash, uh, the cash of course is uh, allocated to 100% to the utilization of a limit. Whereas when we are talking about uh, derivative instruments, for example, like FX forward contracts or interest rate swaps, we only dedicate uh, a certain amount or the market value of those instruments to the respective uh, counterparty limit. And then we have a money market limit as well. So if you want to further analyze an exceedance for a, a counterparty limit, then you need to know in which subcategories the limit uh, actually turns up. And then let's take a look at this new national bank where we had the exceedance uh, earlier on. And you see that on the, on the left hand side the overall limit is exceeded as we saw on the, on the previous screen. And now we can see in which category we actually have to take action. And that's the cash limit. So obviously uh, the cash on those uh, bank accounts is too high and that is uh, actually triggering uh, the overall counterparty limit exceedance. So you can really slice and dice the data. You could have more information on the individual bank partners. As you can see, we have the rating, uh, the lowest rating. We always take the lowest rating uh, for uh, allocating the counterparty limit. Uh, you have the rating outlook and here you have the information that we already saw uh, with the limit and the exceedance. So that is our current dashboard, but we are actually working on a few other functionalities. We are working currently on the trapped cash functionality. We will bring in market data like FX rates or interest rates. Um, we will take a look at uh, financial risk in more detail, for example, uh, FX exposure. So uh, we are working continuously on this dashboard uh, and there is more functionality to come. So thanks a lot and have fun with the dashboard. <laughs>